Bungie is set to announce the reprise raid date launch in today's TWAB and with it will come another day one raid race. As I've started this video early in the week, I'll pin the raid date that's announced in the comments section. I want to jump in today and take a look at some of the best day one raid weapons to consider picking up, especially if you're tackling it in day one. This list isn't exhaustive and don't hesitate to bring some of your own favourites in. I'm going to cover everything from legendary loot, what perks you should look out for, where it drops from, as well as some tried and true exotic picks. The first weapon in today's legendary list is the Submission 900 RPM Lightweight SMG. This drops from the Vow of the Disciple raid and is also a craftable option. SMGs to me are the kings of day one ad clear in close quarter fights. Definitely look into crafting a subsistence or overflow roll with Frenzy in the final column. Its origin trait, Soul Drinker, will give you much needed health bumps across reloads by simply dealing damage to targets. On the theme of SMGs, my second pick is actually going to be what I consider the trifecta of energy SMGs that are available in the game just now. The Funnel Web Void SMG, the reprised Kalos Mini Tool, and for Ark we have the Iclos SMG, which is one of my absolute favourites for day one raiding. Funnel Web is a world loot drop which you can currently focus on Engrams for at the Crown of Sorrow in the Helm. Be on the lookout for either Frenzy or Adrenaline Junkie in the final column, paired with Perpetual Motion or Subsistence in the third column. The Kalos Mini tool is found from opening opulent chests around the derelict Leviathan and can be focused at the Crown of Sorrow using opulent Umbral Energy. As it's eventually craftable, I'm going to suggest either Threat Detector or Unrelenting paired with the Insane Incandescent perk. The Aikilos SMG is in my list frequently as it's yet to be replaced as an ARC SMG option. It only drops from certain weeks from Dares of Eternity which in turn has quite a rare drop rate. If you do decide to chase one or have one in your vault, look out for Threat Detector paired with either Surrounded or Demolitionist. As a quick side note, I may do a future video homing in more choices depending on what champion mods we get next season. That brings me to the third selection and I'll keep this as a broader choice. I'm going to recommend having at least one of the legendary glaives that's in the game right now. The Enigma, Lebray's Rune or Nezarak's Whisper. Glaze received a buff recently and in particular the shield function is really strong for tanking damage. Next up I'm going to label these weapons as utility weapons. What they don't have in Lethality is made up by their utility, namely weapon number 4, the Lingering Dread Grenade Launcher, specifically with blinding grenades. This is a random drop from the Jality Dungeon either by beating the Galran encounter, looting chests or the Kaito end boss fight. Pairing this with Auto Lone Holster in either Chill Clip and or Danger Zone is really useful for slowing and disorienting groups of adds, making them easier to manage. Weapon number 5 is the Riptide Stasis Rapid Fire Fusion Rifle. This drops frequently after any Crucible match. It can roll Chill Clip which again is useful for slowing down enemies in their tracks and is really good at slowing majors down. Number 6, and I'm once again coming at you with a more broader choice to look at. I recommend having a solid LMG option on hand for the raid. These received a buff this season and double down as efficient ad clear and can even put in work on tanker enemies and bosses. If you're looking for an easy obtain choice, the Chain of Command Ritual weapon is up for grabs right now and it has a decent static roll for PvE. For weapons 7 and 8, I'm bundling these together and I'll explain why in a second. The Heritage Kinetic Precision Slug Shotgun and the Succession Aggressive Frame Sniper Rifle. I've bundled these together as when Deepstone Crypt Raid comes around, they can both drop from the Atrax encounter. For an easy farm, load up with a group of Missile Titans rocking the Fallen Star Exotic Chest Piece and proceed to one floor of the boss for an easy challenge clear and two chests at the end. For Heritage, you're looking for the unique raid perk Reconstruction or even Autoloading Holster paired with the Recombination perk to max out its damage potential. For the succession, look out for Reconstruction paired with Vorpal Weapon, an absolute must have. Ok, let's look at some heavy weapon essentials. Starting with weapon number 9, the half truths and or the other half legendary swords. I wanted to slot these in here as the Eager Edge sword perk is unique to these and is a really useful movement tool for jump puzzles or even encounters where time is of the essence. These both drop from completing Dares of Eternity runs and using treasure keys at Zor in Eternity, although the other half void sword is super rare. Legendary weapon number 10 is the Palmyra B Stasis Precision Rocket Launcher. This like earlier is a world drop but is eventually craftable and I strongly suggest going for the enhanced versions of Auto Lone Holster and either Explosive Light or Lasting Impression. This thing came in super clutch for my day one vow of the Disciple Clear, especially for pairing with Izanagi's Burden which we'll get to in this video later. Lastly, for the legendary loot, expect this thing to be crucial for those day one damage checks and that is the Storm Chaser Aggressive Linear Fusion Rifle. This drops from either the Vault Encounter or again the final boss fight from the Jality Dungeon. 
try to lock in a roll with any combination of Rapid Hit or Auto Lone Holster, Invorpo Weapon or even Fire in Line. Okay, so we're about halfway there. If you made it this far and found this useful, be sure to hit the sub button for more Destiny 2 content. With that said, let's look at the range of exotics to have handy on the day. Start with the problem solver itself, the Galahorn. Galahorn is available from the quest when completing the Grass with Avarice dungeon for the first time and quite literally as a problem solver. Add clear? Check. Boss DPS? Check. Not to mention its exotic perk, Pack Hunter, buffs teammates' legendary rocket launchers to fire wolf pack rounds, meaning they can use other exotics in its place. Moving on. Every raid team hates being won, but they're the unsung heroes of the fire team for using it. The Divinity Exotic Trace Rifle. Divinity is only obtainable from completing its exotic quest by doing a series of puzzles in the Garden of Salvation raid. I'll link a separate guide below for how to do this. Divinity creates a large blue orb that allows teammates to hit pseudo precision shots while simultaneously debuffing the target, allowing you to hit more damage. And the dimension also deals with overload champs. Next up, at least one or two players should have the exotic grenade launcher with a horde handy. If you head to the exotic kiosk in the tower, you'll be able to buy this for yourself for a costly sum of materials. This exotic creates a large area of effect blight which does damage over time to groups of adds, making them much easier to keep on top of. Completing the exotic catalyst also gives it auto load and holster, making it an insane utility exotic. By the way, I'm going to throw in an honourable mention to the anarchy grenade launcher. It's not quite as good as it used to be, but it's still good for crowd control, though hard to merit the exotic heavy slot. Moving on again, this will be essential if you're faced with barrier champions in the raid. The Arbalist Kinetic Linear Fusion Rifle makes light work of barrier champion shields even during the contest modifier. If you don't have this yet, I'm afraid to say, but it only drops as a world drop. But, paying Zara a visit on the weekends to buy his exotic engram can drop it if you don't have it yet. It's definitely worth mentioning to have other champion intrinsic exotics in hand for their ease of use. Okay, just a few more to go. One of my favourite hidden gem day one raid weapons is the Wrist Runner Exotic SMG. If an encounter has enemies dealing art damage, then consider putting this on as it will give you an overshield for increased damage resistance and you can chain lightning attacks for quick add clear. You can obtain this directly from completing the exotic quest that's tied to the new light campaign. The next exotic is also an undisputed pick for day one raids. The Outbreak Perfected Kinetic Pulse Rifle. Damage checks in day one can be rough, as well as the ammo economy. Having everyone on your team swap to the Outbreak once your reserves are out can inch out those final few ticks of health needed with the Seaver Nanites stacking up to get the clear. Front and centre is a damage dealing option, don't sleep on. Pun intended. The Sleeper Simulant Linear Fusion Rifle. While not always the highest damage option available, it's extremely reliable for many encounters. Again, this is only obtainable from purchasing at the kiosk at the tower. We're close to the end now, and for my next pick, like Divinity, at least one person should have this handy. The Tractor Cannon Heavy Void Shotgun. Tractor Cannon weakens and suppresses its targets while allowing Void weapons to deal additional damage to its targets. It has a grace period, meaning the player using it is free to also deal damage before reapplying the debuff. Second last in today's list is another hard hitter, the Xenophage Exotic LMG. This is acquired through a secret exotic quest tied to the Pit of Heresy dungeon. Xenophage is superb in scenarios where precision damage isn't needed and even for damage checks. It has great ammo economy and Titan's Rock and Acting War Rig can empty its reserves without reloading. By the way, fun fact, this weapon fires full auto so be sure to hold down the trigger. And now for the final exotic on today's list. This one to me is the undisputed king of endgame PvE, the Izanagi's Burden Exotic Sniper Rifle. This can only be attained from the exotic chaos at the tower in exchange for your hard earned materials. Izanagi's honed edge shot can shut down major enemies with ease. It pairs nicely with auto-loading heavy weapons for huge burst damage. See also how to Izzy swap. And as it uses special ammo, it's much easier to come by ammo bricks during encounters. Mines has never left my side and it'll stay that way for a long time. And that's it for today's video. Be sure to come cheer my team and I when we stream our day one attempt live over on my Twitch. Leave a comment below if there's anything you think I've missed or you want to suggest. Hit that subscribe button for more Destiny 2 content and I'll see you in the next one.